Well, welcome back. It's been about six weeks since we first installed the HD. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to remove it. It's been covered in some rocks and debris. We're going to go ahead and collect it anyways. Uh, and we'll kind of evaluate it after we pull it out of the river. What we want to do is all the bugs that are on the blocks, we want to capture them. So what Jill's going to do here is very carefully, the rope that ties the block to the uh, concrete block, She's going to cut on either side, and then we're going to put it in this container. That way, we get all the bugs that are on the block. Here's what the sample looks like. And you can tell that there's a lot of debris, rocks, and things like that in between the spaces. We'll take that block back and we'll reuse it for next year. We don't want to leave anything like that in the stream. So what we'll do now is we'll add the preservative. What it does is it fixes all the tissues for the bugs. So when we go to scrape off all those plates, it doesn't damage the bodies and we can still identify them. Next, we're going to do a qualitative sampling. We are going to sample every type of habitat that's here. We want to get at least one of every bug that's at this site. And in case the hestrogeny is not good enough to run, we can go ahead and make a determination on the uh, health of this section of the river. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my net and just kind of disturb that area. Kind of scrape off the maximum vertebrates that are on the tree roots. Get a little bit of clean water. Take all the contents of the net. And you can already see the dragonfly, believe it or not, dragonflies actually live for a couple of years in the water before you see them flying around during the summer months. So we're just going to put him right in our sample collecting container. Here's a caddisfly. This is uh, one of the groups that we're looking for that's a sign of good water quality. You have that one, you have the, the mayflies, here's a mayfly right here. Here is a damselfly. You can see him walking around. He is related to the dragonfly. Uh, normally people mistake them for dragonflies when they see them flying around. Mm -hmm. They're generally a lot smaller than the, the dragonflies. Benthic macroinvertebrate actually stands for uh, benthic. It lives in or on the water uh, for part of its life cycle. It's macro, so you can see it with your naked eye. You don't need a microscope. An invertebrate, it lacks a backbone. So that's where we're going to get some aquatic worms. We're going to get some beetles. Here we have a leech, which just by itself doesn't mean the stream is bad. Even in the highest quality, you're going to find some leeches. What advantage does studying the, the bugs that are living in the water have over just studying the water chemistry, like the, the chemical makeup of the water. Water chemistry sampling is like a photo, okay? I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna grab a sample and it's gonna be a snapshot of what's coming through the river right there. Whereas the benthic macroinvertebrates and even the fish community are more like a video thing. They're in the water, they're being affected by whatever's coming down the stream 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 365 days a year. So they're a better idea of what's going on throughout the year.